What's the most calculated thing you've ever seen an animal do? My brother's dog was taking her big stuffed bear with her around the house, with the saddest look I've ever seen on a dog face. Every time she stopped, she would put the bear down, then lie down with her head on top of it, asked my brother, and he'd had to throw out a bunch of her toys from her toy box because another dog had chewed them up. She was so upset about losing her toys that she was carrying her favorite bear everywhere to make sure nothing happened to it. Used to live in the country, we kept finding dead, mauled baby chicks and blaming the dog. So one day she brought us a live one to show she wasn't hurting them, led us to the chicken coop, and showed us the hole they'd been falling out of, they'd fall out and get attacked by wildlife. Holy crap, the dog is smarter than me. Two dogs, one seeing, one blind. The blind dog would chase the seeing dog around the backyard, the seeing dog would run dead on towards a tree and veer at the last second. The blind one didn't, over and over, the first few times it's hard to believe. After a week, you begin to philosophize, after two weeks you close the drapes. The dog is a colossal dong. My black lab plays fetch with herself on hills. She drops the ball at the start of the hill, watches it roll down. Runs and grabs it, runs back up the hill and drops it again, over and over and over. My grandmother's old wiener dog would grab hold of tennis balls by the fuzz and just throw them. Smartest dang dog I've ever seen. My little dog in high school wanted to get into my room, but the door was closed. He walked over to my mom, got her attention, and then walked to the closed door. She didn't get it, so he walked down the hall to my parents' door, which was ajar. He pushed it further open, then came back and sat in front of my door. She let him in, and he went and peed on my dresser. We trained my childhood dog to ring a bell that was on the door when she needed to go outside. One day my sister was eating snacks after school on the other side of the room that had one of the doors with a bell on it. Our dog went and hit the bell with her paw. My sister got up and opened the door. As soon as she was opening the door, my dog ran across the room and stole her food. Reverse Pavlov, your dog trained you. I watched my cat mindlessly swat at a fly on the wall as it buzzed around. My cat then paused for at least 10 seconds tracking its movement, then swung its paw about 5 inches beside the fly, caught it, and ate it. To this day I'm under the belief that my cat ran some complex algorithm its head based on data obtained over 10 seconds and predicted the fly's next move. Movement pattern downloaded. My terrier mix is a real true frick with. He likes to tease our chihuahua and make her sad. He doesn't enjoy fetching, but she really does. He likes to ruin it for her by pretending to be asleep while her ball toy is thrown and just as she is running toward her toy, he will explode from his resting place and grab it before she can. Then he sits on it while she yaps in rage. Your dog's a dong. Our cat seems to know when the hour is arriving and sits in front of the cuckoo clock. Waiting for the bird to pop out, as it cuckoos the number of hours, Mr. Kitty meows in sync, looking longingly at the bird. If you record that, you'll be rich. NYC street lights have a steel tube running horizontally and sparrows nest in them. I've seen pairs of ravens stand on each side and one of them sticks its beacon and starts screeching. The sparrows freak and try to fly out the other side of the tube and the other raven eats them as they come out. And then the ravens switch places. Some smart birds there. My smaller dog would destroy a piece of paper, but be sure to leave it next to my bigger dog while he is sleeping. It looked my bigger dog getting blamed several times for me to realize that he was being framed. The thing is, my bigger dog is so sweet that he can't lie. If he did something and you ask him, he will get the guilty look and won't be able to look at you. The little one can look you in the face and lie. She's a little sociopath. I read that dogs don't actually feel guilt. They just know which look makes you less angry. One summer in Las Vegas. I was beyond angry with my stepkids and their friends for constantly pouring out glasses of ice water on all the tables, counters, coffee tables, etc. WTF would they do that? Every day another dang puddle on another dang piece of furniture with an empty cup standing in the middle of it. Some next level passive aggressive crap. I thought, 
Then one day out of the corner of my eye I saw my stepdaughter's pet ferret gently tip a glass of ice water one of the kids had left on the dining room table. I watched it drink its fill from the resulting puddle, and then stand the cup back up as if nothing had ever happened. Absolutely ferocious. I've shared this a few times, but it's still my favorite. One day, my dog and I were walking around the lake when I found a tennis ball on the ground. We played fetch for a few minutes, but it was pretty obvious that his heart wasn't in it. Eventually, he ran and got the ball, then walked behind a tree to pee. When he returned, the ball was no longer in his mouth. I wanted to see what else he'd do, so I walked behind the tree, got the ball, which, fortunately, he had not peed on and threw it again. This time, he got the ball, jumped in the lake, swam out about 30 feet, dropped the ball in the water, then swam back. This ended our game of fetch. Wow he didn't want to play fetch with that ball at all. My Scottish Terrier was a major digger and escape artist when he was younger. Within a month after we moved to a new house with a thoroughly fenced in backyard, he was getting out. He would always wait until the humans were gone, though. So it was difficult to catch him in the act, he was good at hiding his holes. So one day, I decide I'm going to catch him and block up the hole. I let him out, open the garage, drive my car about a block away and sprint back. He had gotten wise to the garage door and waited until the car left. Sneaky bastard. I walk in the front door and perch about halfway into the house so I can see most of the backyard everything but the last 6 inches along the edges. And he hopefully can't see me. He did manage to spot me. Or something tipped him off. Anyway. He looks cautiously around the yard and then suddenly scampers off to the far right corner of the yard. I wait. And about 5 minutes later he's in the front yard. I got him and went to go check out the fence and see where he dug. There was nothing there. I paced the whole right side of the fence, from the very back to where it met the house. Lots of places there could have been a hole, but no actual hole. Well, I sit back and think about it, and remember that when I saw him in the yard he was more on the left side. So I check on the opposite side of the fence. He had dug a hole in the opposite corner he had darted to. Instead of the far right, it was in the near left. He dug between two thick patches of grass and had somehow managed to move a cinder block near it so it looked flush, but left him just enough space to crawl through. He knew he was being watched and threw me off his trail. He's the smartest dog I've ever owned, and the only one that's managed to trick me. I love him dearly, haha. <laughs> oh, my cat is well known for this. He's always been my little kitten and listens to almost everything I tell him. He does not, however, listen to a single thing my so tells him. This one is one of my favorites though. Both of us were hanging out in the living room one sunny day. I'm zoned out on my laptop, so is watching some show he loves on the TV. So he closed the curtains to avoid glare. The dolling fluffball is on the windowsill. At some point the sun moves so that a crack in the curtain at the edge of the windowsill puts a big yellow beam in the center of the TV. So puts a weight on the corner of the windowsill, on top of the curtain, to keep the sun out. My cat, pee off about the minor invasion of his space, pushes the weight off as soon as so is sat back down. So puts it back on, cat pushes it off again. This happens a few times. So I get asked to deal with it. I get up, put the weight on the curtain and tell the cat behave and get back to my stuff. All is well and the cat doesn't touch the weight again for about an hour. Until I get up and head to leave the room. Cat sticks his head out from his hiding place, checks if I'm around, looks at my sew and then blatantly pushes the weight off the sill again before leaving the room. It was so clearly mummy isn't here now, so frick you. Scream as loud as you like, mummy can't hear you. My cat became friends with a stray. She'd meow every time she saw a family member so they assumed she wanted food so they put food in her empty bowl. Well we finally realized she was being fed 5-6 times a day. The stray cat and my cat would drag the full food bowl into a bush and dump the food out then drag it back empty and repeat the process. I've posted about a cat I used to have named Grey. He was grey and white. Freakishly long tom cat we took in. He loved to stalk birds under my mom's bird bath, happily taking an hour to get a bird, break its wing, and play with it. But that's not the most calculated thing he would do. See, he knew most dogs were little b. Sure they'd come in our yard, yipping or barking at him. 
he'd call their bluff and jump on them and claw away. I literally saw him run off a Great Dane after riding him bucking bronco style. Totally badass. Well, we get my sister's dog, a chow, because it attacked and injured her landlord's dog. Now Max wasn't a nice dog. See, most dogs bark. Max would bark, if he couldn't get you. Otherwise, this solid black muscle bound dog would just rush anyone he didn't know and he could break chains. We had to use those rubber coated metal cords. So the first time Gray meets Max, he did something I'd never seen before. He bolting way up a tree. Max just ran at him, not growling, not barking, just silent black death until Gray was up the tree and safe. Then he barked. Gray understood this dog was different. By now, you should know that Max wasn't exactly a safe dog to have around. He always had to be leased. Well, Gray wasn't about to let that indignity stand. That cat would walk out in clear view of Maximum. Max would bolt for him and then wham. End of the leash. Choking and barking at the cat. Gray would then calm as frick. Walk within inches of that dog. Almost killing itself to get at him. And lie down and pretend to sleep. Dog is drooling and choking and barking and the cat was right there. Taunting him. He would do this almost daily. It got so annoying. One day however, Max didn't chase after Gray, and Gray got a bit too close and Max got him in his mouth. My dad got the dog while I chased after the cat, blood on the deck, found Gray, covered in slobber but unhurt, because that cat had sliced and bloodied the heck out of the chow's nose. No way he could win a real fight with that dog, but dang if he didn't bloody his nose and escape. After that. He taunted the dog less often and only if he was barking at him, but it remains the most metal frick you dog action I've ever seen a cat take. My dad never cared for or respected our cat, Bobo. He grew up a dog guy and just couldn't empathize with cats. Until one day, not unlike the rest of us, Bobo would usually take a massive dump in the morning. On that front, this day was not going to be unusual. Unfortunately, my dad, the villain in this particular story, was the roadblock between Bobo and business as usual. Home alone, and in a rush for work, my dad made his huge mistake. Bobo was standing by the door to the basement, which had somehow been closed by accident. Her food, water and litter box were all down there. She was meowing, impatient, wouldn't you be? My dad saw her meowing, she saw him seeing her. He knew what she wanted. She knew that he knew what she wanted. It's a simple situation, right? Well, in an uncharacteristically selfish rush, my dad walked right out the door without taking one split second to simply open the basement door. Hours passed. Bobo the cat had nothing to do but plan. With no means to put words to her frustrations, Bobo decided to leave a message. After work my dad returned home to see Bobo waiting to greet him. In an unusual move. She didn't even try to run outside when the door opened. She was a 50% outdoor cat who had been indoors all day. My dad had felt a bit guilty all day, and immediately could tell that she was behaving oddly. She was just, watching. The kids and the matriarch were on vacation. It was just dad and Bobo. And as my dad went about his evening, the cat simply followed quietly and watched. Wherever he went, whatever he did, Bobo, was, watching. This all started to leave my dad unnerved. He was already beginning to see this cat with a fresh perspective. There was more going on behind the eyes of Bobo than he had seen before. But it wasn't until the very end of the night that he learned the extent of her machinations. Walking upstairs to hit the hay, Bobo followed two paces behind. When he looked down at her, she looked up, ensuring eye contact at each opportunity. Atop the steps, my dad entered his bedroom and... Now, it goes without saying that a giant dump left somewhere in the bedroom could have been an accident. But what Bobo did? What Bobo did couldn't have been further from an accident. Nope. She wanted to make her message clear. This was a statement dump. Perfectly centered on the pillow on my dad's side of the bed was a cluster of used Purina Chow. Bobo the cat had dumped precisely where my dad's face was supposed to lay to rest. He looked down at her. She made sure to hold eye contact until she knew that he knew all that she knew. From that day until her last, Bobo was alright by my dad. She didn't communicate often, but he knew that, if he made her need to send a message, it would come through loud and clear, and the basement door stayed open. 
My blind and deaf cocker spaniel got up on the table and ate all of our leftovers on Easter Sunday. He'd pushed all the chairs into the right position for him to jump up onto the table. He's 18 blind and physically weak but he's a little genius dog and he will do anything for food my childhood dog 20 pound cockapoo once pushed a chair next to the counter got up on it opened a cupboard door and managed to get the bone steak that was thawing on top of a stack of plates on the second shelf we were pee but impressed a stray cat my family took and when i was a teen hated the blue jays that congregated in our forest like backyard I once saw her race up a sapling and bat at them with one paw while holding the trunk with the other, like a mini King Kong swatting biplanes. However, she figured out that she could stretch herself out just inside our sliding glass door with her belly exposed and lure them into dive bombing her and knocking themselves out against the glass. I was sitting in the room and my brother was playing with the cat. He left the room to do something. When he was coming back, my cat Sears went up. She went and hid behind the door. As soon as my brother entered, she jumped at him, and my brother nearly crap his pants. She used to do this often to me and my brother. Before seeing this, I always thought it was a coincidence that she would be around when we entered a room and would try to give us a scare. Turned out she used to wait for us to come and would then scare us. I miss that little idiot. I saw a cat chase a huge freaking spider, like bigger than both hers paws together, under an equally large maple leaf. She then stomped on in with both paws for maximum force until it was dead. I don't know what it did to pee her off but it paid the price for it. I saw the same cat get bit on the nose by a lizard it was chasing. After pulling it off, she swallowed it whole in one bite. She was not to be messed with. I feel like cats would kill us if they were big enough to eat us. We used to have two dogs, Fred and Ginger. Fred was a sweet simple dog. Ginger was incredibly smart and very manipulative. Fred was significantly larger than Ginger so his bed was significantly larger than hers. She of course always wanted the bigger bed. She would often bark at the door to be let outside which would cause Fred to join her. Whenever I would let them out, Fred would bolt out the door, while Ginger would look right up at me, turn around and plop herself down on Fred's bed. I have two dogs both have exactly the same beds. Same size. For some reason the older dog prefers one of the beds to the other one. The smaller dog will lay on this favorite bed. The older dog will get on the bed and stand there over the smaller dog until she gets fed up and moves. I used to live in a rural area and would let my cat out. She would constantly return with dead presents to leave on the porch. Usually, the cat will just wait on the porch until someone notices and lets it in. However, one day she must have been particularly impatient. Sitting in the other room, I thought I heard a knock at the door. I could somewhat see the front door from where I was, enough to see that no one was there. The knocking stood after a few seconds but starts again in a minute or two. I finally walk over to the door and see the cat with a dead mouse in her mouth. Just as she flings it and hits the door with it, she proceeds to walk over, pick it up, and fling it at the door again. After years of seeing people get let in the door when knocking, my cat had figured out how to also summon the beings to the magical portal to the AC, and she decided the best way to knock on the door would be to continuously chuck a dead rodent at it. TL. DR. Cat learned how to use a mouse to knock on the door and be let inside. My mom's dog knocks on the door too. My mom has two doors for one entryway, a screen metal storm door and a solid door. There's a doggy door in the storm door, and the pup has figured out how to push it against the solid door to knock on it when she wants in. Multiple times like a person would. She knocks louder if you don't let her in. My grandma once found a pregnant cat. I made her a house out of cardboard boxes, with foam inside. Isolated it and all that. I put it in a barn, a really safe spot but she wouldn't use it. Some weeks later, I visited my grandma and moments after I stepped out of the car that same cat came running towards me. She snuggled around my legs and then continued her way towards the barn while looking at me. I saw her butt looked weird, and then I realized she gave birth. She took me right to that house I made for her and there they were, tiny baby kittens. A few years ago, my aunt's family adopted an unaltered, two-year-old male dog from the shelter. 
Very sweet and friendly, Bill had a fascination with humping their smaller, also male dog to the point where the smaller dog couldn't go anywhere without being stalked and violated. So until the new dog could be neutered they kept the new dog in their nice, finished basement but put up a large piece of plywood in front of the doorway since there was no door. The plywood went up about halfway. The dog kept backing up away from the plywood, then approached over and over again. Each time he went further and further back. He was no doubt trying to calculate how far back and how fast he needed to go in order to jump the barrier. All just to hump the smaller dog. New dog was fixed a few days later. Both dogs are brought now. I'm a railroader so I'm on trains out in the middle of nowhere a lot. There was a cow next to the track that I honked the horn to get her attention and hopefully scare her away. She looked back, put her head back down and walked towards a wire fence. Then she put one hoof on the bottom wire bending it down, stepped through the fence, put her back hoof on the wire and walked the rest of the way through like she had done it dozens of times before. I guess the grass really is greener on the other side. Fellow railroader, at one of our sidings there were several cows who could somehow escape from their field and get into a neighbor's field and eat all of his hay. Then they would all march back to their field. My cats get frontline every month. It's about a half ounce of liquid applied to the back of their neck. They hate it. Baxter apparently figured out what was up, because he saw me coming and ran away. I chased him around the house, up the stairs, and he ran into the room where the kitty treats are stored, and sat down on the floor. I looked at him, said yes, that's fair, gave him the front line and a handful of kitty treats. My cat hates getting his claws clipped, as you know. Cats are liquid and he will ooze out of my arms anytime I try to clip his claws. I have to wrap him completely in a blanket, even covering his head. He just has to be able to not see or he will wiggle out, with just his paws sticking out so I can clip them. He hates it. If someone even says the word Pareto he goes and hides. My cat who systematically played with every single thing in my apartment to gauge my reaction, and always played with the one that made me the most attentive once he'd figure that out. I saw a bird fly down and lay a walnut in the middle of the road, walk to the sidewalk, and wait there until the walnut got crushed by a passing car, then the bird casually walked back out and reaped its reward. Similar, I saw a crow pick up a nut of some kind and with it in his mouth he would perch on the rooftop. Then nosedive toward the ground releasing it about 15 featuring off the ground. He did this over and over until the shell was cracked enough to get to the nut. My dog likes using his farts to vibrate his balls. He will back himself up to a wall and curl his tail over his back so his brown ears flush against the wall and let it rip. As it vibrates his dingler bag he perks his ears and tilts his head to the side like he doesn't understand what just happened. Then he runs away happy as can be. I'm imagining your walls have little brown spots all over them. I change my parakeets to a pellet diet from a seed diet. One of them figured out how to unhinge the food dish from the side of the cage and dumped out the whole bowl of pellets because they didn't like them. While we were talking about how eerily smart my sister's dog was, I had had a glass of wine and proclaimed that the dog knew English, and bet that she would fetch me something that hadn't ever been asked of her before. I said, dog. Go get me that blanket, get the blanket, and pointed at a blanket that was on top of a bag of stuff in the next room about 10 feet away from me. The dog stared at me, we all laughed and said, maybe not but she is smart. A bunch got up to get refills on drinks, I stayed on the couch, my head was turned talking to people and I felt a nudge. It was the dog, with the blanket in her mouth. Oh and I once saw a cow climb a fence. My friend's dog hates little dogs, especially little white fluffy dogs. Maybe she was bullied as a pupper back in the shelter, or maybe she was teased growing up, but either way, she detests them. And now she's a big hulking 120 pound lab shepherd mix and she will sideswipe and shove every single tiny dog she walks past. It's amazing. She'll be on her walk, casually walk by a little white dog and just swat whatever dog she walks next to. It's gotten to the point her owners have to cross the street every time they see another small dog coming. She doesn't care about big dogs though. Plot twist, she's actually always been the bully, just because. When I was younger, 
My mother used to own a female lovebird. This bird was a member of the family, allowed out in the house all the time, would crawl into your shirt pocket and snuggle, sit by the side of your dinner plate and chirp for treats, almost sickeningly cute and loved by all. One day my mother decided she must be lonely and bought a second cage and a male lovebird. For the next few days the new lovebird got all the attention while the female lovebird just stared at it silently. A few days later the weather was nice. So we wheeled the cages outside so the birds could get some sunshine. I happened to be in the kitchen and looked out the window only to notice the female lovebird's cage was open and the bird was missing. Frantically trying to spot it in the trees, I realized that she was sitting on the door of the new bird's cage, pulling the release mechanism. The door opened and the new bird flew out and off into the distance. The female lovebird then returned to her original cage and pulled the door shut behind her while I was standing there with my mouth open. No new lovebirds were bought after that and the cage was double locked when she went outside from then on. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.